four months later, we are back in Telford, my favourite place in the UK. This time, we are at Ultimate Dubs, so we thought we were going to do a little guide how to Ultimate Dubs. So, we are here at Ultimate Dubs. 2023, first big show of the year. Quite a few of you seem to watch our last video four months ago at Ultimate Start. I did all right, so I've been forced to make another one, basically, uh, for Ultimate Dubs. So right now, we're in sort of the main entrance, some nice cars here, mix of stuff, some OEM stuff. We're gonna head down to the main entrance, skip in the queue, hopefully. But yeah, let's have a look. We're gonna do a bit of a Cass's guide, how to Ultimate Dubs. So this is sort of the main foyer area, foyer area, right by the main entrance. Doors are currently shut. We've got about minus two minutes till the doors open. Um, so this is almost like a small VIP section almost. There's some really cool stuff here. So we've got an old school transporter, with an awesome build in the interior. Uh, but this is what's caught our eye first. This is a, a Mark I Caddy, I believe, pretty sure, with a VR6 R32 swap in it. This is nice, isn't it? So one thing we didn't immediately spot, that in fairness you can't miss is the fact that this pickup is now solely designed purely to carry its own strut brace. Possibly the biggest brace in the world. Interior-wise, there's a fair bit of work gone into that as well, to be fair. We've got a nice couple of Macaris in there. Very old school, V2 airlift. That's almost like a classic system now. I'm not going to say it's old. Do we stop that stuff? V2, V2 is discontinued because it is a classic system, I'm going to okay. say. It kind of goes with the build a little bit more because it's an old school sort of build, isn't it? Best thing about this car for me is the fact that it's so unpractical, but it's a practical car. It's purely designed to carry its own strut rate. All right. Do a couple more? Yeah. Let's see what else we've got over here. That's what? pretty cool. I don't know if you've seen this yet. Immediately, what can you tell from it? Engine swap. Love the interior in this. Have you seen this? He's trimmed the steering wheel, the center of the steering wheel, to match the, uh, the centers of the seats. That is awesome. Again, airlift 3P or 3H. This is becoming a bit of a theme already, isn't it? Well, there are just been two cars. That's uh, 100% of the cars we've seen have had <laughs> R32 true. lumps swapped in them. That intake is sick, isn't it? We're, we're right with cars, I think, me and Jason, but yeah. there are cars that you obviously don't notice. We've developed this trick right that shows. If you're not sure what a car is, just come and stand behind it. You, you might learn something. And then sometimes, if the owner is really helpful, they might go a little bit further and give you everything they've missed about the car. <laughs> So immediately, right before the main entrance, you can't really miss this one. Mark 1 Scirocco. <laughs> this thing has literally been stripped. Everything, apart from the engine, the steering wheel, the seats and the pedals, basically. Have a look at this. So I believe this is the standard engine. Shaved. Something like that. Tucked. Engine wires are tucked. There's just nothing else here, is There's it? just nothing on show, apart from the bare minimum. It's absolutely amazing. So much effort gone into this. But if you have a look at the interior, Literally all you can see is the handbrake, the seats, the gear stick. That is cool, isn't it? I wonder how long it takes to, to make something like this. So moving on from the foyer, we have the main entrance, triple one. This place is massive. I think they had this, first thing you'll notice on the left is this little RC drifting area. I think they had this at Ultimate Stance. I think me and Jason might have stood here for about an hour and a half just watching the cars. But we got a phone call from Matt just like, uh, you coming back to the stand? We're like, oh, so one of the first things you're going to be greeted by when you come into the first hall is this awesome Beetle. There's a lot going on here. This is probably the first car that has that wow factor to it when you walk in. So let's start front to back, shall we? Yeah, there is a lot going on. First thing you notice, 
is the, the paint job, or lack of paint job, should we care? What's, is, it, is there an effect? What do you call the effect? I'm not the, just going to call it rust. The patina. I mean, it is patina. Rat rod. Possibly look. patina. Uh, absolutely love that. It's a lot more effort to make that kind of style paintwork than you think, isn't it? Or you just leave it out. You've in just the got rain. to leave it outside, yeah. yeah. Um, something that I've just been educated on by cameraman Jason is this type of window. He calls it the safari style window, and he claims. Um, <laughs> that this is originally from, was it the old school VW buses? Yeah, and other, and so, other. So you could open it up on safari if you needed to start shooting at lions and zebras. Because apparently on safaris, that's something you need to do. Yeah. I think it might just be uh, some old school air conditioning. But Jason thinks there is deeper meaning behind that. Anyway, interior wise, it's quite stripped back. I'm guessing they're the original seats, aren't they? Left it like that on purpose again, just to give it the, the, the vintage sort of vibe, isn't it? <laughs> it's nice, I like it. I think it's on airlift. I think it looks like a manual kit, a two-way manual setup, which to be fair, it suits the vibe of the car perfectly. We have pain to live with, I'm sure, but it's obviously not a daily, so it doesn't matter too much. It's got the twin tank set up in the back. I love the kitchen blinds in the rear window. If it gets a bit sunny, just lean back, pull your blinds. I like that. But do you like do you like this? I mean, now after going around it and having a look at it, do I like it? Yeah. I love what he's done to it. It's not my type of car. I don't think anyone would really appreciate my type of car. I'm a very basic, uh, but I absolutely love what he's done to it. There's a lot of effort put into it. It's a very cool build. One thing we've just spotted, wide-bodied S3. What is it, peach? I think it's a peach sort of color. Um, but this absolutely catches your eye when you're walking in. This is so cool. So, Audi S3, 8V, wide-bodied, a lot of carbon. I think it's CT carbon that supplied it. West forged wheels, I believe. They're wide, man. Have you seen how wide these are? They're wicked, I love them. I think that bonnet alone, Jason, is probably worth more than a couple of our first cars. We like that, don't we? Yeah. Like Jason just said, if you saw this coming up behind you in your rear view mirror, you'd, you'd just pull over, wouldn't you? You'd just get out of the way. This thing is hard. So this is just a quick one. I don't think many people actually know about these. So these are called Rotiform Aero Discs. These go on, I think, 18 and 19 inch Rotiform LASRs and RSEs as long as they're eight and a half J in width. Um, basically, they come in black or white, completely blank, with a new center lock. And if you have a mate or know someone that works in like graphic designing and printing, you can stick whatever you want on these. But for example, it's a lady that owns this car. I think we just saw a lady get out. She's made the print match the GTI sort of tartan seats, but it's wicked, I love it. It's the little things, right? Jason just spotted this one. I think the owner might have forgotten to clear up from last night. It's a bit dangerous, that, isn't it? Imagine if you fell over until that game over, isn't it? I was just going to say, have you ever seen one of these before? In real life? How tall are you? It's massive, isn't it? Me? Yeah. 6'6". Uh, six, six. Bring stock to, to like shows? That's an something? idea, that, isn't it? Right. There's a lot of space in this. It's just that sort of electric car vibe, isn't it? That would help with ULEs, right? That would help with ULEs. We don't talk about ULEs at work at the moment. No. That's a touchy subject. That is. Give it to what? Is it 2024? We'll talk well, about it then. No, August. What? This is happening in August, mate. Oh, we've got to sell some cars, man. <laughs> so moving on from hall one, now we've got the 
the main hall. There's a lot going on here, so I think we need to get our, our head around it first. So you've got the main stage down the end. That's where they're going to do all the awards later. Okay, we've got Auto Finesse, we've got Westford. There's a lot going on in there. All right, so here we have the show and shine area. There's a TTRS here that I'm looking at. Airlift 3P or 3H. I love the wheels. I love the carbon on this. This rear splitter is so big, I love it. Is that a canard? Do you call that a canard? I guess if it sticks out, it kind of is, right? I don't know if you've seen this uh, on Auto Finesse's social media. This is their new caddy. It's nice, I like it. BBS RS's, air suspension, looks hard, doesn't it? It would be cool if we could work out a way to do something like this for either car audio or tuning store related. Maybe Slam Sanctuary, I don't know. It's cool, isn't it? Auto Finesse's marketing is really clever. So I'm sure you're all familiar with Auto Finesse anyway, but caddies is kind of their thing. Uh, let's take a look. So that's the latest one, that is the new one. But look at the rest of them, man. They're all a very similar sort of style design, it's like the Auto Finesse signature touch, isn't it? So this one's accompanied by, what is it, a Honda Zuma? Honda Zuma. Honda Zuma. Yeah, but I think it's been stretched and it's been, yeah. I think this was it's, last it's year. It's definitely good. been stretched a little bit. That looks a bit like the tires on my Jag. So this next one, this actually drove past us on the dual carriageway just before Telford. And we're all a bit shook to be fair, this thing is crazy. Spin around. So this is, rumour has it, a homemade DIY wide body polo. This thing is breaking the internet, I think, at the moment. This has got to be one of the most popular cars here at the show. OZ Futuras, they're probably about 20 J wide. Now, what do you reckon they are? Probably only 9 to 10, aren't they? The level of detail on this is absolutely insane. So while you're there, if you spin around to the back wheel, look at how it is sitting. Look at the arch lift. It's got the fitment so bang on. But it's not just the body kit. What do you reckon he's done in there? That's still a lot of work, isn't it? A real roll cage, not a show cage. That's important. We might have to reach out to this guy, see if we can get him on the channel or something. Yeah. This is cool. There's a strong possibility that this is my favorite car of the show, I think. At least for you. At least for me, I, if this doesn't win car of the show, I don't know what's going to be it, from what we've seen so far anyway. Okay, so if you have lasted to the end of this video, thank you very much. Very boring, so well done, you deserve a medal. I guess that probably wasn't the best how-to ultimate dubs guide video, but hopefully we did showcase a few cool cars here. I think we've tried to handpick a selection of some of the best cars. Obviously, there are so many cars here, we can't do them all. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, because you guys seem to enjoy the last one for some reason, uh, please drop us a like so we know. Drop us a comment, see what you thought we could do better, do differently. Let us know what you thought of the cars. And make sure you subscribe to the channel because we have got a few more videos on Ultimate Dubs coming out in the next few days. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching and we will catch you at the next show, I guess.